out there in high performance land. This is Chris Straub with Straub Technologies and we're going to go over a few points about hydraulic roller lifters. Now it's it's everybody's known knowledge that I'm out on the internet and whether it be a forum, whether it be a Facebook group or someplace like that and I try to give good solid tech information. I've been familiar with the Morel hydraulics ever since they first started building these things in roughly about 1997-1998. Uh, it's a check ball style lifter. This We have a pair of uh, V6 Buicks here actually is what I have here today. This is a 700 wheel and this is what we refer to as an encapsulated lifter. An encapsulated lifter is when the body goes all the way around the wheel. So that's a 700 wheel. This is an OEM type design. Now, Morel did do a design change as far as the axle back around 2015. And what was happening is, this lifter is only good for about 365, 375 load lift. When you get after that, depending on the engine family, an encapsulated lifter, the leading edge of the body can actually grab the profile of the camshaft, depending on the lift velocity rates and what you're looking at on the profile of the load. So, what they did was, with the, with the swedged axle. And a swedged axle is actually an axle design that the OEMs use. They put the axle in there and they come in from both sides and they pinch that axle. And that's a swedging process and that actually holds the axle. Morel in 2015 went to a live axle just like they do on their thousand dollar sets of roller lifters. So this axle, axle actually spins freely in the body and then it's got a wire lock any of your top brand manufacturers, this is the design that they use. So with constant loading and unloading, with a swedged axle design, which a lot of the other lifter manufacturers use, you're constantly hitting the axle in the same position. With the Morel, that axle is unloaded and it can actually spin freely, so you're not loading that axle constantly. So this is an engineering point of this, this lifter that makes it a better product. And again, the guys at Morel are all racers. They've got race cars, they enjoy this stuff. Um, what they machine on uh, Monday through Friday, they race on Saturday and Sunday and stuff. So again, this is they are a live axle, and this is all the street series lifters, and this is all the high-end hydraulic roller lifters. Now let's get to the three main problems that I see on the internet. Now back in the 70s, we were all told that for building a race motor, we've got to use 20W50 oil. Well, back in the 70s, we also had a phone book, and we also had rotary phones. Well, those don't exist anymore, and oil has come a long way. Um, if you look at the API and what they, and uh, the American Petroleum Institute, and the changes in oil from about the late 80s, early 90s to present, it's astronomical what they've changed in oils. But the additive packages today are far superior than what we had back in the 70s. So there's not an OEM, and the big three all have hydraulic roller pushrod V8s coming out the doors. So nothing's coming out with 20W50. A couple of the OEs have got some pretty serious hot rods coming down the line, 500, 600, 700 horsepower with hydraulic roller lifters. And again, they're not using 20W50. They're using a 5W20, a 0 20 that type of oil. So based off the hydraulic valving in this thing, you've got to have an oil with a centistoke. Now I've literally been accused of making up that word on the internet. Well, uh, we'll pull up the definition and show it to you, show you how to spell it and the whole bit. Centistoke is the measure of fluid at temperature, how it flows as far as that goes, the flow rate type deal. So hydraulic roller lifters, and this comes OE documentation. Again, you want to send me an email at cstraub at straubtechnologies.com, I'll send you what I refer to as the lifter bible. You can read exactly what the engineers that designed hydraulic roller lifters for the big three said back in the 80s. And again, Cenestoke. So you want a Cenestoke rating of below 15. This is, and I'm not going to tell you what brand of oil, because we all have brand oil. I'm talking to Chrysler fans, I'm talking to Chevrolet fans, I'm talking Ford fans, Poncho fans, AMC fans, okay? Same thing with oil. People like this oil, people like that oil. So I'm not telling you what oil brand to use. I'm just telling you, you need to find out the Cinestoke rating. So you want a Cinestoke rating of below 15 is what you want. That's gonna be found in almost all five weight, 
uh, five W20s, five W30s as far as that goes. A lot of 10 W30s, some 10 W40s. Now for my marine customers out there, I can tell you there is a 50 weight uh, made by Driven, uh, Frank Robert 50, uh, FR50, and that oil is used in my offshore customers successfully with these lifters and stuff. And again, I'm not pointing out Driven, I just know that oil and it's a 50 weight. A lot of marine guys, uh, they're very loyal uh, to the OEs. The OEs want a heavier weight oil. Well, I know that oil will function in these things. Preload. So, preload on a lifter. Back in the 80s, there's camshaft companies that told you quarter turn, half turn, as far as that goes, okay? Well, they did that back then because they didn't want lifters floating and kissing pistons, okay? And we did not have the manufacturing processes that we do today and been able to run the tight tolerances and stuff. Again, that lifter bible I told you about, they talk about it. And the OEs want to see somewhere between 50 and 70 thousandths of preload, okay? Not a quarter turn. So I've even been accused of you can't use a rocker arm stud as a measurement as far as that goes. Well, the threads are, a, are a, the thread pitch is a given distance. Well, it is. It's like a veneer caliper as far as that goes. So you can use a rocker arm stud. So on a 7 16th, one full turn, that's 50 thousandths worth of preload times the rocker arm ratio. Okay? So you want at least one full turn. That's what we do and that's what we tell our customers with aluminum heads. But again, I'm going to tell you, I'll give you a range. Somewhere between that 40 and 70, definitely with aluminum heads, you want to err more towards the larger number, 50, 60, 70. If an all aluminum motor, you definitely want to go that 60 to 70 thousandths of preload is what you're after as far as that goes. The quarter turn, it does not work. Also, what that does is it shortens the travel distance and the recovery that that check ball. All Morel lifters are a check ball style lifter. So that check ball has a shorter distance to travel. So when you're able to give it that preload, that shortens that distance so the lifter actually recovers quicker and is able to maintain continuous RPM at a higher RPM ratio. So again, or higher RPM. So with, uh, uh, with that said, you want that preload. Now the Morel lifters have around 120 thousandths worth of travel as far as that goes. So you want that. Uh, that 50 to 70 is not crazy. I've had customers go a, a full turn, a, a turn and a quarter, that type deal, okay? So I've touched on Centistoke, I've touched on preload, now we go to lifter boards. Now, a lot of you enthusiasts are not gonna be able uh, to check this. And this doesn't come from Morel, this doesn't come from anybody else. Again, we're back to the OEM manufacturer. And that lifter Bible states, you want somewhere between a thou and a half to a thou and eight tenths, okay? Well, that oil has to travel from this lifter to this lifter to this lifter to this lifter to this lifter, okay? So that tolerance has got to be correct. That's how the lifter is fed oil type deal. It's not squirted in there type deal, it's that. So, it, it's that tolerance that feeds the lifter. If that tolerance is too loose, the engine will basically hemorrhage, is what we'll do. If it's too tight, then the lifter is restricted. So again, you need to fall in there. Now, if you're building a big block Chevrolet, you have no idea what that 289 block's got for mileage on it, but you need to have the lifter bores checked as far as that goes. And this, those three things as far as Cenestoke, preload, and lifter to bore clearance, if we address those three and somebody's got one of those off, it fixes 90% of the hydraulic roller lifter problems as far as that. So again, you want an oil with a Cenestoke of below 15. You want your lifter bore clearance somewhere between a thou and a half to a thou and eight tenths. And you want to set that preload, okay? Now, are lifters noisy? Yes, anybody in the GM world and even in the Chrysler world. You fire these things up cold, they're gonna be noisy. I mean, I can remember I had a 29 fountain with an EF525 Merc motor. You fire that damn thing up with a hatch open, it sound like 16 baby rattles. The engines have got to get temperature as far as that goes, okay? So it's, it is normal for the lifter to be a little noisy at initial startup, and then as the oil warms up, 
as that center stoke rating kicks in and that oil starts to flow through the lifter, you're going to, the, the lifters will get quieter as far as that goes. So hopefully I've touched on a couple things, dispelled a little bit of the internet lore and the myths out there. And again, if you got any questions, feel free to call us 423-391-7774 at Straub Technologies or send me an email. I mean, I or you know, hit me up on Facebook or, or one of the forums. If we can help, we'll help. Again, thank you for your time out there.